Hello. I am your professor for today. My name is the Gilmore. I am going to make my screen bright so that you can see my beautiful face. And we are going to do a lesson today on the history of homosexuality in the witchcraft community, which dates back very, very long. So we're going to start with this book, which is the Oxford Handbook of Witchcraft um, in Early Modern Europe and Colonial America. And it was edited by Brian P. Levac. It's a Levac book by Oxford. Um, Oxford University Press. And I have a page. Okay. So what we're going to be talking about is um, somewhat triggering. Um, it's actually to do with a sect of uh, witchcraft, which is not necessarily um, accepted among the witchcraft community, let alone the rest of the world as a religion itself. And um, we're going to start with this book that I also have, which is the History of Witchcraft, Sorcerers, Heretics, and Pagans, the second edition. Um, it's a Thames and Hudson book, um, and it is by Jeffrey B. Russell and Brooks Alexander. Um, so yeah, I just got this used on Amazon. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Gerald Gardner, who is this woman seen here. She's the woman who started the Gardenia sect of uh, witchcraft, and I'm just going to read um, what the picture describes before I read what the book's describing. Um, so this is actually Doreen Valiant, the grandmother of modern witchcraft, shown here in 1962, five years after her break with Gerald Gardner. Valiant went on to become one of the leading exponents of in independent witchcraft in Britain until her death in 1999. So that was uh, Doreen Valiant and not uh, Gerald, Gerald Gardner. So, it says, Whether Gerald G Gardner discovered the religion of witchcraft or invented it, there can be no doubt that he publicized and promoted it, and that he, to any, and that he did so with alac alacrity. I don't know what that means. By 1949, the year he published his novel, High Magic's Aid, Gardner had already accumulated a body of rituals, scripts, and commentaries that, ha that was to be the nucleus of the emerging witch religion. By 1950, Gardner was spreading information about it to and through his occult acquaintances in London. By 1951, the year the witchcraft laws were replaced, Gardner was putting witchcraft and himself into the public eye by contributing a series of high-profile articles on the subject for a popular weekly magazine. In Hutton's words, Wicca was a tradition that hit the ground running. Gardner was convinced from the outset that publicity was the key to Wicca's survival. He was also aware that publicity was a two-edged sword given the infamous reputation of witchcraft with a real potential for ugly sensation and backlash. But since Gardner was independently wealthy, he believed he could be a high-profile spokesman and ride out the backlash, thereby allowing others to remain in the closet. He's, he seriously underestimated the fallout that would ensue. Journalistic interest in Gardner's witchcraft, initially curious and respectful, quickly turned lurid and hysterical, with headlines declaring, among other things, witches, the devil worship, in London. Some members of his coven were sufficiently frightened by the fur furor, it, it, like, uh, it looks like I should say furor, um, F-U-R-O-R-E, to withdraw from further participation. Many of those who remained acquired an enduring aversion to media attention. But by continuing to press for publicity, Gardner polarized op opposition within the group thus sowing seeds of the first major schism 
that would occur later in the movement he was building. But Gardner had pursued the spotlight for a reason, to spread the news about his religion and attract new adver adherents. I think that means followers. Um, his, and his campaign succeeded in doing so. Among those drawn by the publicity was a young woman who would come to play a prominent role in the development of water, modern witchcraft, Doreen Valiant. This lovely lady. Where was I? Ah, hmm. oh, yes. Doreen Valiant, Miss Valiant, was possessed of a keen mind and probing intellectual curiosity, a strong personality and a creative streak that amounted to a poetic gift. She read the magazine articles about witchcraft and wrote a request for more information. Her letter was eventually passed on to Gardner, her fo who first met with her and later initiated her into Wicca at Midsummer of 1953. The, revi the revisioning of Wicca, Doreen Valiant to Alex Sanders. Gardner and Valiant's relationship turned out to be pivotal, not only for the two of them, but also for the future direction of the witchcraft movement. Valiant joined Gardner's own coven and soon became a high priestess. When Gardner met Valiant, he was in the process of writing witchcraft today, and he began to make up use of her poetic gifts right away by having her compose an, in an invocation for the, a winter solstice celebration. Her compositions, the poem Queen of the Moon, Queen of the Stars, made its way to Gardner's book and Wiccan practice as a traditional witch's ritual. In this, and other ways, Valiant supported Gardner's efforts to claim antiquity for his religion. Though she seemed to have doubts about such claims herself, she also went along with the game when Gardner later presented her journalists as a member of one of the traditional witch families and had written about his about in his book. But she's, she was less accepting of Gardner's deceptions when they impinged on her personal knowledge. She was familiar enough with other occult teachings to recognize that some of the supposedly traditional Wiccan material in Gardner's Book of Shadows had been borrowed from sources she could identify, in particular from the works of Aleister Crowley. Valiant was fearful that Crowley's sordid and sinister reputation would spill over and contaminate anything associated with him. In a bold act of confrontation, Valiant, the disciple, challenged Gardner, the teacher, over the, his use of Crowley material. Gardner rationalized that the tradition he had discovered was fragmentary and he had been forced to fill in the missing parts as best he could, adding, if you think you can do better, go ahead. Valiant accepted the challenge with enthusiasm. She took Gardner's Book of Shadows, which he was still in the process of putting together, systematically expunged Crowley's influence and worked the other material into a poetically eloquent system of belief and practice that became the basis for what we know today as Gard Gardnerian Wicca. For that contribution alone, she has been called the grandmother of witchcraft. Today, followers of modern witchcraft all over the world recite her prose and poetry as part of their ceremonies, especially the text known as the Charge of the Goddess, which contains the famously evocative line, let my worship be the heart that, re that rejoiceth for behold, all acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. So that was uh, Miss Valiant. Um, awesome name. I am going to actually touch on um, something that she instilled, which was homosexuality in um, this culture. So one of the amazing things about this woman was that she started the revolution. Um, Gardenarianism was the first uh, sect of witchcraft that actually encouraged homosexuality and embraced it, um, specifically women with women, but on a broader scale they didn't judge, um, which was really beautiful to read for the first time. I don't know if you were raised in a very religious home, but like for me, this was very important um, to learn because it was so, it wasn't that long ago. Um, yeah. I'm just finding out where I want to read. Okay.
was a woman who called herself Budapest, who, in my opinion, wasn't a really uh, wonderful person. However, she is still instrumental in the history. So I'm just going to start um, on page, sorry, 174. Um, and this is a picture of her here. And this was um, more of the ritualistic things that they would do. Um, so, Z. Budapest, a Hungarian immigrant, fused feminist politics, her own pagan folk traditions, and elements of gar gardenarian witchcraft to create women's spirituality, also known as Dianic witchcraft. So, I don't know if she chose that name, if she was given that name, how she got that name. Like, it was the 70s, so I'm assuming, like, she was not, she didn't ask, but, like, I don't know. Like, this is, this is all the information that I have, unless I, like, can talk to her. <laughs> so, let me know in the comments. Thanks. Um, so, opposite this picture here is the first degree initiation of Janet Farrar in a ritual conducted by Alex and Maxine Saunders. The binding and blindfold are part of the death and rebirth symbolism embodied in the ceremony of initiation. So, it's all about death and rebirth. Leaving behind what you knew. Budapest and her fellow coveners, on the other hand, knew very well in 1971 that they were cross-fertilizing modern witchcraft and feminist politics. Budapest blended elements of Gardenarian Wicca, specifically Wicca's symbols, rituals, and emphasis on magic, with the causes and concerns of radical feminism and of radical politics generally. Women's spirituality emerged from the mix as a form of religious separatism, no men allowed, with an aut autonomous female de deity, the goddess. Who de whose devotees were pitted against part patriarchy, militarism, military, mil milita sorry, militar militar mil militarism, M I L I T A R I S M, and ecological destruction. Budapest called her new tradition Dianic witchcraft or Dianics, after the male shunning goddess of Greco Roman tradition. It is not surprising, given its radical feminist origins, that Dianic practice has a very high percentage of lesbian participants. In fact, sorry, in effect, Budapest did for homosexual women what Saunders did for homosexual men, i.e. opened the, pack, the practice of witchcraft to their full part participation. Those developments swelled the ranks of modern witchcraft and raises public profile, but they were not well received by all witches. Gardenarians especially rejected Budapest sexual exclusivism and deplored the Dianic tendency towards goddess monotheism, spared us Jawa in drag, that's in quotes, pleaded one. The idea that the power of witchcraft was inherent, all, inherent in all women simply by virtue of being female directly opposed the Gardnerian view of witchcraft as a closed structure system of in initiation into progressively revealed mysteries based on the Dianic dynamism, D-Y-N-A-M-I-S-M, -S Google it, of sexual polarity. The witchcraft movement took a great step forward when that built-in conflict was brilliantly resolved in 1979 with the publication of the, Spirit of the Spiral Dance by Starhawk, a California feminist writer who had been trained by gardenarians. She showed how the coven w could be turned into a training group in which women could da da da. Here's Starhawk. I don't know her heritage. It says opposite Starhawk. Um, I'm not gonna say it's a like look here. I won't do that justice. You can say that on your own. Shown in the hills above San Francisco Bay is the author of the most widely read book on modern witchcraft, The Spiral Dance, the founder of the reclaiming tradition of witchcraft. Liberated, sorry. She showed how the coven could be turned into a training group in which women could be liberated, men could be re-educated, and alternative human relationships explored. She reinterpreted magic in terms of psychology as a set of, a set of techniques for self-fulfillment and the realization of human potential. Starhawk founded the reclaiming tradition of witchcraft based on her blending of elements from Gardner's Wicca and Victor Anderson's fairy tradition spelled F-A-E-R-Y. With the RAR, R-A-W-E-R, -E feminist witchcraft and activist pol politics of Budapest and the Dianics, 
Her purpose was to give modern witchcraft a greater relevance to a wider appeal. Sorry, a greater relevance and a wider appeal. And it worked. Sales of the Spiral Dance soon surpassed all other books on the subject, and before long, it had replaced witchcraft today as the model text. Beyond its alliance with feminism, witchcraft's emphasis on nature also resonated with a larger culture's rising anxiety over the environment. Tim Otter Zell was one of many witches and pagans of the period who took the notion of Earth as a living entity, James Lovelock's Gaia hypothesis, and conflated it with the presumed goddesses of pagan religion. Zell, Starhawk, and other American witches continued to draw energy from environmental issues during the 1980s further increasing modern witchcraft's social movement, sorry, social momentum, and bringing it even into even closer parallel with mainstream concerns. Z Budapest and Win-Win Spiritual, uh, bleh, Z Budapest and Women's Spirituality carried witchcraft from the occult ghetto, nice, into a, the heart of American activist politics. Come on. Starhawk carried it back out again to the wider public by linking it with compatible stains of social critique and self-development philosophy, thereby, thereby diffusing witchcraft far beyond its esoteric sources. I must say, like, if you're any person of color and you're reading this and you want to get into Gardenarian, like, we don't discriminate against you. Like, what the fuck? When was this written? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, it was it was uh, copyright nineteen eighty and two thousand seven. Thames and Hudson Limited, London. All rights reserved. No part of this publication may be reproduced or transmitted in any form or by any means, electronic or mechanical, including photocopy, recording, or any other information storage and retrieval system without prior permission in writing from this publisher. First published in 1980 in the hardcover in the United States of America by Thames Hudson, blah, 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 505th Avenue, New York, New York, 10110, Thames and Hudson, USA.com, second edition, 2007, Library of Congress catalog, card number, blah, 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 ISBN, blah, 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 printed and bound in Singapore by CS Graphics. For Kai Russell and Michael Thomas and for Anastasia. Okay. Jeffrey B. Russell and Brooks Alexander. Google them too. Because, like, this is a good resource, but, like, you should know who's, uh, like, writing your resources. Also, Google me, um, not hashtag ad. But, um, like, you should know, like, who you're listening to. Thanks. And um, I hope you learned something because uh, you don't have to be anything to be anything. And love is love and it always has been. And like, I feel like I've known this secretly for so long and like, is that, is that weird that I just like come out as a gay witch? I don't fucking know, but like, don't hurt me. Cause like, yeah, that's scary shit, man. <laughs>